Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. When, when we were last talking, we talked about the, this, this gap and uh, you pointed out that uh, it didn't involve a great many people. And the problem was a lot, lot less difficult to solve than uh, the government was trying to make out. How many people would be affected by this so-called gap? Well, well, if, if people who are like you're just talking about that, the regional and remote communities, and uh, and they they are only a very tiny, tiny group of people. You're, you're talking about uh, you know only tens of thousands. People out of eight hundred thousand people. So, so I think sometimes treating everyone as the same, you know, you are, you know, you disadvantage a whole lot of people where we should be focusing on those remote and regional areas. And it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, pink, green, or purple; uh, they all have similar issues in those communities. And that's that's why I think we've got to be more targeted in this area. Well, how would you do it apart from getting people to move closer to a major town and therefore facilities? How else would you do it? Well, there's, there's two things. Um, the two things are, it's like myself, I live in Sydney. I come from the bushes, uh, you know. Uh, I call myself an economic refugee in, in, in a bit of a funny way because this is where the jobs are. This is where the services are. This is the education programs and everything are. So you you opening up a lot. Now, a lot of Aboriginals have done that. For us, we have to look at the areas and see what's available and how we can uh, have that economic and educational prosperity to happen there. And the reality is, as you just pointed out, is if, if there is no prospect of that happening, then we must have that serious conversation about moving. Well, what what they what have they been doing for the past fifteen years apart from talking about this and throwing money at it? Why why wouldn't somebody with a wise head like you come up with a formula that actually worked and would probably cost a lot less money? Oh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, it, it would cost a lot less money, and it would be uh, a hell of a lot more of outcomes. The product uh, productivity commission is right. The policies that we have now actually work against closing that gap and work against for that uh, education and prosperity to happen for Aboriginal people like the rest of the country does. Now, we've got to, so we have policies that actually encourage people to stay in some of these communities where there is no hope for the future. So you're looking at the welfare payments, you're looking at a wide range of other things. Now, the reason that my parents moved us to Sydney was because they didn't have those things that were working against them uh, to, uh, to move to Sydney. They actually, they actually had the, they saw the opportunities in Sydney. They saw the opportunities for for their children and their grandchildren, and they were able to do that. Now we've got to work closely on those type of programs and say, okay, this is what works. We've got fifty years of evidence that this works. And we need to focus on those things. So we look at if, if people are living in these regional remote areas, how do we, if the, uh, how do we create jobs? How do we get the kids to school? And the only way to do that is to get businesses. And, that, and how do we deal with the crime that comes out of that? But but, but if there is no opportunities, and nothing's going to change, that we really have to put in place policies that help them relocate or move somewhere else. And, and Warren, Les Alicus uh, here. We spoke uh, last time you were on air with Jeremy. Um, I, I came from the private sector and I was in the wine industry and when we sat at the boardroom level and we looked at how we spend our money, a uh, pot of resources to invest, we actually worked out the, the key trigger areas where stimulus would be best achieved and best best outcomes and I think I, I see that the the Aboriginal folk are being well looked after in all the major city centres but as you say in the remote centres the Pilbara the Wadanya um, Pil, uh, well all, all over um, they're just not getting the attention and the uh, the, the the rightful amount of the so-called stimulus um, and you said before that you want to coerce or work with the uh, private sector to get these jobs provided for them and to 
um, I guess, make them able to be facilitate them to contribute and be part of uh, a normal, vibrant society. That, that's correct. And you hit the nail on the head, because I'm in the private sector too. One thing I find really strange, like in the private sector, every year and every few months or weeks, we assess where we're spending our money. We look at where the outcomes are happening and what are the opportunities that are happening. And then we make decisions based on that. In the, in the well, for one of a better word, in the Aboriginal industry, they don't do these things. In fact, we saw uh, last, late last year, Senator, J- J- Senator Price and Senator um, uh, Kieran Little, uh, two Aboriginal women senators, uh, for the Liberal Party and National Party, put, they put forward the idea that we look at audit and we look at an audit, we look at a performance audit and that to see, OK, what works, what doesn't work and, and, and then focus where we're going to spend the money. And and the government voted that down and I thought that was insane because I do that and you did that, you did that in your own businesses and that, where you sit there and you look at, look at the what the performances are, where the money's been spent and where we should be focusing on investment and, and things to happen. And yet we don't do that in the, in the, in, in the Aboriginal industry. You know, with all these billions of dollars that get spent, and, and no wonder they don't have any outcomes because, because no one's there to check, OK, maybe it's better to spend the dollar here and not there. Yeah, well, isn't there anything that you can do to rattle... Rattle that cage and get them to change their their approach and philosophy. Yeah, well, what what I'm doing now is is uh, going to the private sector, you know, Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal, whatever, um, and and looking at how we can do the things. We're not going to wait for the government. The government's, you know, they're not going to do anything. So, so that, the only thing they mentioned was it, which I thought was a great idea, was how do you get home ownership. On, uh, on Aboriginal land because we've got this weird land title which uh, uh, precludes uh, Aboriginal people on their own land they own in through native title or land rights they can't they can't they can't own a house and we all know his, through history and through the globe through, through the cultures all around the world the ones that have improved their lives the first step is to have a home to yeah. have that asset building. And so I said, look, I'm very happy to uh, support that. I'm concerned uh, maybe about what the Labor Party is going to do in regard to legislation and that. But let's, I said, I'm happy to work with you guys for that to happen because that's the first step of breaking this, this poverty cycle, breaking this cr- crime cycles and that, and, and also getting and helping getting kids to school. The other thing, we've got to change the way we, uh, we, we do attendances. You know, like in the Northern Territory, they they their funding come through how many kids turned up on at school on day one. So if it's 100 kids, they got funded for 100 kids. And then they didn't worry about it. So the next day there was only 50 kids. Uh, next day after that was 25 kids. So all the other kids weren't getting educated. Huh. So we, we, we've got to turn that. It's an idiotic uh, policy. We said, no, you should be getting paid on results like I did in the private sector. Like absolutely, you, absolutely. And, and that, so we're going to turn that around and say, no, if you just want this money, then we want to see kids at school, we want to see their performances and, and, and that so we can help them get better performances and that. And so then they can come out as with educated and with skills that can help them in, in, in a building a future for themselves like what happened with my mum and dad and for us. So we got so we can go and get a job and we go and start a business. And the other thing is we you you just can't depend on government setting up agencies out there all the time. We need to have the private sector working with us. Now it could be just that, like an Aboriginal person who's working in the mining industry is he's an he's a, he's a electrician. He wants to go home, set up an electrical business, and work for those communities and helping in the maintenance and all that type of stuff. Then that, then we should be helping to do that. But at the moment, there's too much um, regulations and too too many rules in place that that precludes that and stops people from doing it. So we've got to change. We've got to look at that, the regulation, and how do we minimise that, still get the outcomes, but minimise that so that that we can create the jobs and people to do things. Yep. Warren, as a leading question, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but we, we know we're spending the money. 
I mean, it's quite clear from the Treasury how much money is being spent annually. Um, the leading question, telling question, is where actually is the money going? Is it going to vested interest or is it going into the bureaucracy of, you know, but non non indigenous people. I mean, where where is it being all absorbed? It's like blotting paper soaked up, but no result. Well, it, it's even worse than that. There's two there's two other areas as well. All the money that's going in the mining from the mining industry, from mining on Aboriginal land, goes into these trust funds, and it, it's it's about. I was talking to Tanya Constable, who's the CEO and many director of the Mineral Council of Australia, and she was saying it's something like four billion dollars. So that's $4 billion eager, billions of dollars from the, the federal government. Then you've got other things that are happening. But we're, and you're 100% right. We That's one of the reasons why we wanted a review and an audit. So we know where that money is going. So, and, and, and how can we then focus on the area where, it's go, where it should be going and making that happen? And at the same time, if there is fun and games going on, and we need to highlight that and fix that as well. Did you see, Warren, this morning the... Uh, well, it's actually been going for several years, this uh, Aboriginal Funeral Fund. Uh, yes. They've been apparently operating for about 30 years. It fell over two years ago. Uh, the previous government wouldn't pay compensation. This government is now going to compensate those people who were rorted. And I heard Linda... Bernie this morning say, oh, it was a scam. It was a scam and it was all run by a bunch of crooks. Now, does, does that mean that for 30 years, various governments of various persuasions, this, these crooks were operating right underneath the nose of government and police and nobody did anything about it? Well, I put it back to, to um, Linda Bernie, the minister, and I say, you know that and yet you, your government, previous Labor governments, previous coalition governments would have known it as well. Why have you let that go on for so long? Yeah, Why no, has no, that... No, no audits or anything. No audits, no yeah, checks and balances. No. Yeah, that's, that, to me, as a businessman, is totally bizarre. We, we, we look at those things all the time uh, because, you know, we're... 99% of people are honest and good people, but there are people out there who are crooks, who are scammers, and we all know that. So you, so to make sure they're not ripping off the good, honest people, that they are actually exposed, and we has, must have those systems in place. We, like, I, you know, I sit on, uh, you know, ASX companies and and, uh, and and private companies, mate. The laws and regulations that we have to follow to make sure that we're not scamming and not doing a bad things is incredible. But they, sh why hasn't the Aboriginal uh, industry got the same thing? Yeah. That's, what, that's what I find. I just find this bizarre. But it seems to me, Warren, that we, we've, like typically in history, we haven't learnt. I mean, since John Howard disbanded ATSIC, here we have another era, another long era of the same thing repeating itself, Warren. Oh, look, it's, it's like the old Einstein thing, you know, in the first sign of madness is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting yeah, a different yeah. outcome. We actually have to smash that. I mean, you know, I'm a great, I've become a great believer in disruptive theory, which is if the thing isn't working, stop it. Yep. No. Smash it and actually put in place something that does work. <laughs> yep, yep. And like the NDIS, where you find shady operators and providers, you get rid of them, and you That's bring right. them to book. When, when yeah, uh, yeah. have you made up your mind about the Senate? Uh, I, I have. Uh, look, I'm, I'm not putting my hand up for the Senate this time uh, because I'm, I've decided that I just, I'm going to step outside government. Yeah. And I'm going to, you know, get work with the private sector to do the jobs, do the audits, do the checks, and 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 lobby the government and embarrass them uh, when these things come up, like uh, the minister Bernie saying, "Oh, this is a fraud, this is a scam." And well, you know, minister, why haven't you done anything about this? Yeah. Why yeah. haven't you? You know, this is the thing that drives me crazy. You know, so that's what I'm going to be. Uh, pushing for. I'm going to be in 
great shows like yours have across the country and, and put, not only just saying, you know, we've got to fix this in, but actually testing ideas. So going out there and testing this idea. And, and there's a no-brainer that we do need these audits. It's a no-brainer. No, absolutely. We do need, the, <laughs> we do need these performance uh, reviews. Did you, uh, see- you know, I do that to my staff all the time. Well, that's why you're <laughs> you know? successful. That's why you're so successful. Yeah. Did you happen to see the Prime Minister the other night, I think it was on 730 where he was asked about the failed voice referendum and he said quite blatantly, uh, we will find other ways to achieve what we want. So we, well, well, what did we do? We wasted 400 or $500 million to get a, a public decision and he says, oh, no, no, it's all right, we'll find the back door or another way. What do you make of that? I, d- I think it's tight. Bizarre. It's like his comment a few months ago, a few uh, month, a couple of months ago, where when he's asked a question about the voice, and he said, "Well, it's no, you know, well, these are not his exact words, but this is what he meant. There's no skin off my nose. That's a problem for the Aboriginal people." Hey, wait a minute. You just spent four hundred fifty million, or whatever that final figure is, of, of taxpayers' money, our money, on something that you knew was going to fail, and they did. They knew seven, eight months out that it was going to fail. So what a waste. If I did that in my business, my board would get rid of me, you know. And that's what, you know, we start, you know, and then he, then he, the Aboriginal people are really angry in the community now that he just threw them under the bus. Yeah, you know, yeah. No idea about fixing things into the future, no idea about changing things and doing performance reviews, doing audits, and none of that. None of those ideas. It's just, oh, we're going to try and sneak this through in a different way. You know, we're going to, we're going to not listen to the si- over 60% of Australians who voted against this. Black, yeah. white, green, pink, migrants and everyone. Yeah. People who have been here. For, uh, he's just going to, you know, this, is, this guy is just pushing an ideological uh, mm. attack rather than looking at, what is best and what works. Yep, I uh, couldn't agree more. Warren, thank you very much for your wonderful time and your, your fantastic words. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, uh, thank, thanks for that. And it's great to talk to you too again. Good on you. All, all the best, Warren. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.